All right. <clears throat> Hello to everybody. Prophet David Taylor here for my uh, weekly live Sunday broadcast, Sunday Prophetic Word. Let's jump right in because, as always, the Word of God is exciting. The prophetic word, the rhema word, the right now, the breathed Word of God is always on time, always exciting. Okay, so let's jump right in. We'll start with a word of prayer. Lord, we come before you. Thank you for opening your hand, O oh God. Thank you for your matchless grace. Thank you how you have already loaded us with benefits today, O oh God, with your good word and your spirit and your grace and your mercy and people we can go to church with and, and places of worship and food and safety and so much you've already given us, O oh God. And we just want to give you the glory that is due your name. I just want our grateful hearts for you being such a, a, a worthy father, being such a good God to us and being rich and not being short in any area, but having loaded us with benefits already today. So we just give you the glory, Lord, out of loving hearts, uh, the glory that's due your name. And I surrender myself to you, Lord. I surrender myself. Forgive me for my sin, any thought, word, and deed that's not like you. Wash me clean by the blood of Jesus. And I surrender myself to your God that uh, the Spirit of God might speak through me, that you might have what you want to go through and come out of me, O oh God, that uh, the people might be blessed, and that your word would go forth and edify and enrich our lives, because you said we can't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of your mouth. So be in this broadcast, and we thank you for it, and we believe you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. All right. <clears throat> now, uh, as always, I'm going to give you a lot of information, so you're going to have to watch this video more than once to get it all. What's my tagline? My tagline is, y'all ought to know my tagline by now. My tagline is, God already told you what was going to happen if you would just listen to the prophets. Okay? I want to say welcome to all my audiences, those of you that are watching me live on Facebook, those of you that are watching me live on Periscope, those of you that are looking at the replay, and also my YouTube audience. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. I want you to please like and share this video, okay, because my goal is to get this video to millions. Now, why would I say something like that? Because I understand that whenever God sends a prophetic word, it's designed to bring change. Changes a family, changes a city, changes a nation. Every time God got ready to change a nation in the Bible, he rose up a prophet. Okay? That's how powerful and important the prophetic word is. So I want you to please like and share this video. Okay? If you want to sow into my ministry, uh, Matthew 1041, whoever receives a prophet, because he is a prophet, will receive a prophet's reward. So I have my PayPal.me link on my Facebook Live Periscope profile and Twitter feed, and you can donate to my not-for-profit on Amazon Smile, and that is tax-deductible. Okay? How you find me uh, is I always hashtag everything I do with hashtag PDT. So if you ever want to look me up anywhere, look up the hashtag PDT and then Prophet David Taylor, and that's me. Okay? I'm live today, Sunday, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, every Sunday. And then I'm live on the second Thursday of every month, the second Thursday, with a broadcast I called, uh, I do called No More Genies, where we get rid of our genie concept of God, and we see what the Word actually says, and we believe God based on His Word and not because of any wrong concept we might have. Because God is not a genie. He, we don't just rub Him. We don't just rub the lamp. And he does what we say. It doesn't work that way. And people have died because they didn't understand that. Okay? Because we follow him. He don't follow us. We bow down before him. We do what he says. Okay? So I very strongly encourage you to watch my No More Genie series. Okay? All right. Today's prophetic word is entitled, Snap Into Place. It's entitled, Snap Into Place. Now, I'm going to start out with the prophetic word that the Holy Ghost wants, to, wants me to release. For thus saith the Lord, for behold my people, I have called you into maximum riches, maximum wealth, and maximum joy. For in my presence there is fullness of joy, and at my right hand there are pleasures forevermore. But how you are to get your maximum wealth, riches, and joy is you have to snap into place. If you're the elbow, be the elbow. If you're the nose, be the nose. If you're the mouth, be the mouth. If you're the ankle, be the ankle. If you're the knee, be the knee. 
Because when you are out of sync with me, you're out of sync with the head of the church. Therefore, I release unto you, my people, a spirit of alignment. I'm releasing unto you a spirit of alignment for my assignment that you might snap into place, that you might get in the place I want you to be on my body and do your function, do what I have created you to do. And as you get in sync with me and you snap into place and you become everything I meant for you to be, then you will discover maximum joy, you will discover maximum riches, and you will discover maximum wealth, says the Spirit of the living God. Amen and amen. Prophet Taylor, are you talking about money? Yes, I am. I'm talking about wealth and riches. I'm talking about money, okay? Because a lot of people are asking God where their money is or where their money is going to come from. Your money is going to come from you getting in the place that Jesus has ordained for you to be. So let's go into that. Let's look at our scripture. Our scripture today is Psalm 22, verse 14. Psalm. Now, the book of Psalms is primarily music. It's not the biggest book in the Bible, but it's number two or number three. The biggest book in the Bible is actually Jeremiah. So Psalm is number two or number three. I forget which one is absolutely number two. But uh, it's music. It's right in the middle of the Bible. So we're going to look at Psalm chapter 22, verse 14. <clears throat> I am poured out like water, and all my bones are disjointed. My heart is like wax. It melts away within me. Um... King James Version, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. Uh, one more version. New International Version, I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart has turned to wax. It has melted within me. Now, that scripture is actually talking about, uh, that was a prophetic scripture about Jesus Christ's experience on the cross that that was the Lord, what the Lord was going to feel like, like he was poured out like water and his bones were ripped out of joint because of being nailed to the cross and that he had no more heart left in him because it melted away. But in the context of today's message, what the Spirit of God was showing me is that when we are out of alignment with Christ, it is like his bones are out of joint. If you ever had a bone out of joint, if you've ever broken a bone, it's painful. It's painful beyond my ability to describe. It's an extreme amount of pain. If you've ever had a broken bone or a bone out of joint, or if your shoulder got dislocated and you had to pop it back in, you know what I'm talking about? That kind of pain? Well, the Lord was showing me that there are too many Christians that are not where the Lord wants them to be. If you are, if the spot that God put you on his body is his nose, then you have to be the nose. You're designed to be the nose of the body of Christ. You can't be the eyes. You can't be the mouth. You can't be the hands. You can't be the shoulder. You can't be the elbow. That's not your place. And there are so many people, my pastor was talking about it this morning, there's so many people running around in the body of Christ trying to do what they want to do, trying to do things that they are not called to do. And when you are a Christian, but you are not doing what the Lord wants you to do, you are out of joint. You are causing pain to the head of the church, Jesus the Christ. And you are cost, costing yourself joy, and you're costing yourself money. That's right. That's right. I'm not stuttering. And so uh, what I really need to do is rebuke the spirit of misalignment. Now, I can rebuke the demon, okay? In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the spirit of misalignment to dry up from the root. I command you to get away from the body of Christ. I command you to get out of the ear of the saints. And because you are a lying demon, because it is written, we shall worship the Lord thy God only, and him only shall we serve. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I cast you out. Now, I can rebuke the demon I just did, but there's a part that you have to play because everything's not the devil. Some things are people being stubborn and rebellious and operating under their own uh, ideas. Okay? And here's what I mean more specifically. You cannot tell the Lord who and where you're supposed to be. He tells you. A whole lot of people are like, well, I want to be a pastor. You can't be a pastor just because you want to be. 
Well, I want a big church. I want to have a mega church. You can't have a mega church just because you want to. Well, I don't want to serve. I don't want to be on the care and concern many. I don't want to be a, a usher. I don't want to do any of that. I want to do this. I want to be a prophet. You can't be a prophet just because you want to be a prophet. The prophetic doesn't work that way. Okay, I'm here to tell you that you do not call yourself to be a prophet. The Lord calls you. And anybody else running around talking about their prophet and God didn't call them, they false prophets. Because you can't call yourself to a prophetic office. You can't call yourself to an apostolic office. It doesn't work that way. And there are a lot of the members of the body of Christ. Now, a pastor this morning was talking about the fakers and, and the scammers and the people running around doing stuff. There are people both in the body and out of the body. It's a shame I have to say that, that are not doing what they're supposed to do. Now, if they're sinners and they're just wolves in sheep's clothing, then that's what we expect because they're still under the control of the devil. But if you are born again, you do not get to decide how you serve God or, or serving God on your own terms. You have to take up your cross and you have to go before God and surrender and say, not my will, but thine be done. And if you haven't ever done that, you are bones out of joint. You are out of sync with the head of the church. You are not doing what he wants you to do. Now, I want you to imagine it like your body. What if one day your kidneys get an attitude and your kidneys say, we don't want to be the kidneys no more. We want to be the eyes. Because everything comes through the eyes and the eyes get to experience everything that you experience and everybody's always looking at your eyes, and we're just sick of being kidneys. We'd rather be eyes. And then they stage revolution, and they start inching up from your belly and, and in your chest cavity, and your kidneys try to push your eyes out the place. That sounds like something out of a horror movie, doesn't it? You know why? Because your kidneys don't get to wake up one, one day and decide they don't want to be kidneys no more. Okay? That's the same thing you're doing if you're arguing with the Lord about where you're supposed to be and who you're supposed to be. If God has called you to be the clavicle, if God has called you to be his collarbone, then you got to be the collarbone. You don't get to be the shoulder. Okay? If God has called you to be his feet, then you got to be the feet. You don't get to be the hands. You can be jealous of the hands all you want to. If you the feet, you're supposed to be the feet. You ain't going to never be the hands. Okay? And there's too many people running around here trying to be famous, okay? If God opens a door for you to become nationally known, nationally known, internationally known, fine. But if he doesn't, you have to serve him anyway. You have to serve him in obscurity. You have to serve Jesus as if nobody ever calls your name, okay? If you never get on TV, if, if an article is never written about you, you have to serve the Lord in the capacity that he's called you to serve him. Because he needs you in the place that he wants you to be. You don't tell God how you're going to serve him. You don't get to serve God on your terms. That is not of God. That's a rebellious spirit. You have not taken up your cross and surrendered to Christ if that's your attitude. And if that's your attitude, you are bones out of joy. It's just like when Jesus was dying on the cross. That's how you're making the Lord feel. It's like re-crucifying him all over again. And what a terrible thing to do to our precious Lord and Savior, the head of the church who's already died, been buried, resurrected, and has ascended to the right hand of God to make him feel all over like he's on that cross all over again. And that's what we do when we are out of joint with him. You have to go before the Lord and surrender. You have to go before the Lord and lay down your ideas and say, to him in no uncertain terms, unconditionally, not my will, but thine be done. Okay? And a lot of churches don't teach that anymore. A lot of religious backgrounds, people don't know that anymore because we've gotten so caught up in so many other messages, we've forgotten the message of, if any man would come after me, let him first take up his cross. You have to deny yourself. You have to crucify your self-will so that you can line up with whatever the Lord's telling you to do. In practical terms, for some people, do you know what that means? That means some people, you might have to move out of the town you're in. Because I know a lot of people that had to move to get in the will of God. I have a family member that told me once that she felt like she was being called somewhere else, and we'd been together our whole lives. And I was like, you're being called out of state 
She said, yeah. I was like, are you sure? She said, yeah. And she moved, and she's doing fine. She's blessed, beautiful family. She's prospering because she had to move to get in the will of God. And some people, the Lord told you to move 10 years ago, and you're still right where you were. Okay? It may mean that you may have to go back to school. Or it may mean, if you're in school, that you might have to change your major. I had to do that when I was in school. I had one plan uh, when I went to school, and the Lord told me my first year, change your major. He spoke to me just bell clear. It's like, change your major. I was like, what did you say? He was like, change your major. Because the plan I had wasn't what he wanted. Okay? So, however it is that the Lord is speaking to you, you have to be willing and obedient to get in the place God wants you to be. A whole lot of people want to be married and they still single. If God has promised you a spouse, and that spouse is coming. But in the meantime, what God is trying to do is he's trying to properly align you so you can handle them when they get here. And that's why a whole lot of people, when they're single and they want to be married, they fight the Lord and they don't understand what they're fighting. You're fighting your own blessing. The Lord is trying to properly align you to be a spouse because you don't know how to be a spouse on your own because you didn't invent marriage. You didn't invent husbands and you didn't invent wives. You therefore cannot be one on your own effort, your own ideas because it's not your invention and it doesn't work the way you think it should work. It works the way God designed it to work. So for some people, if God has promised you a spouse and you're still single for the time being, he's trying to align you He's trying to trim the fat out of your life. He's trying to help you get rid of things that aren't going to help you be married and aren't going to help you go where he wants you to go. And that many times is very, very painful. But God wants you to endure the pain, to learn the lessons, to get into alignment. But why? Why, 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 why? That's where we get into the joy and the money. Because you are never going to have the joy that you want out of life until you do what Christ created you to do, until you snap into place. Some of y'all have been unhappy for so long because you've never been in the will of God the way you're supposed to be. You've never been in the place God wanted you to be. That's why you haven't been happy in your years. Because you've never done what the Lord wanted you to do. That's why you're not happy. But that's also why you are not financially prosperous. Some people, you've given and given and given, and you've tithed and tithed and tithed, and you believed and believed and believed, and it doesn't look like anything is happening. Let me tell you why. Because you can sow all those seeds, and you can open the heavens, but God is not going to give you the increase. Not that God is not going to give you the harvest you're looking for until you get into place. So your harvest haven't, hasn't manifested because you haven't stopped in a place yet. But the way you maximize your finances is by getting in alignment with what Christ wants you to do and then doing it with all your might. Once you find out what it is that God wants you to do, you go for it. You try to become the best at it. You take classes, you practice your skills, you do it over and over again. You do it in the mirror depending on what you're doing. You work hard at it. You throw your whole self at it. That increases your value to the marketplace. And that's how you begin to reap the finances that you want. Because the better you are at what you do, that means you are a problem solver. Did you know that? Did you know that people are running around <clears throat> in the business marketplace with a handful of problems? They're looking for someone that knows how to solve their problem. And you can write your own tickets. You can write your own checks. When you're so good at what you do, you can solve people's problems. That's what people are looking for in the business marketplace. That's why the Lord wants you to do what he has called you to do, what he has created you to do, and then do that with all your might. Throw yourself into it. Become the best you can be in that area. That's what increases your value to the marketplace. But when you aren't in place and when you haven't given yourself fully over to what God has called you to do, you are never going to reap the money that you want. You are never going to reap the money that you believe in God for. 
because you're out of place and or you're not giving your whole self to your calling. A lot of people do that. They, they try, you know, they're what I call quarter saved. <laughs> they ain't half saved, they quarter saved. They 25% saved. They got 25% of their life under the Lordship of Christ, but they holding on to that other 75%. That other three quarters is all them. <clears throat> you're never going to prosper financially like that, and you're never going to have joy with that kind of division in your life. Die vision means two vision. Die, two vision. Two visions. You can't have it your way and God's way. You have to pick one. And if you surrender to God, that's not always going to look like what you thought. That's not always going to feel like what you thought. My pastor was preaching this morning about learning how to endure, about how once you get in the will of God, you've got to hang in there because there are going to be tests and trials and tribulations. That's 100% correct. Even when you get in the will of God, there are going to be tests, there are going to be temptations, there are going to be trials, there are going to be tribulations. But when you snap into place, then you learn how to weather all those storms. And if God has called you to be the shoulder, then it doesn't matter what kind of pain the body goes through. If you know I'm the shoulder, you're going to stay right there in place. And you're going to endure whatever other pain you have to go through. You see that? And so that's what's been holding up your finances. That's what's been holding up your money. As you're not in the place where God wants you to be and or you're not doing it <clears throat> with all your might. <clears throat> excuse me. Trying to become the best you can be at what God has called you to do. All right. All right. If you have any prayer requests, put them on the screen. And I'll pray for you right now. So if you've got any prayer requests, put them on the screen. All right. If there are no prayer requests, then uh, I'm going to go in the spirit. When you see me clo my, close my eyes, and when you see me start speaking in tongues, I'm asking the Holy Ghost about physical healing, about casting out demons, and now I'm adding finances, okay? So let's deal with if there's anything out there that needs physical healing. All right. The Lord says somebody's struggling in their feet. I don't know if it's gout. I don't know if you have swollen feet. I don't know if you have an injury. Uh, I don't know if your ankle swell, but somebody out there, you're struggling with your feet, okay? Do this. Even if you can't touch your feet, put your hands down as low as you can on your legs. If you can't bend down and touch your feet, put your hands down as low as you can and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, I speak life to my feet. I command my feet to be 100% whole. I command my blood pressure to be normal. I command my veins and my arteries to flow without blockage. I command strength in my ankle bones. I command restoration to my skin. I command every part of my feet to be 100% whole right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay? That's how you do that. See, now every time I'm led to pray for somebody else's healing, I feel it as I'm speaking it. So I know the power of God is moving. But you have to believe it. You can't get healing on my faith. You got to get healing on your faith. The Lord said, according to your faith, so it is unto you. Okay? Hmm. All right, the Holy Ghost is showing me that the bridge of somebody's nose, right around here, right around your sinus cavity, somebody's having trouble there. Put your hand on it. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the bridge of my nose to be 100% whole. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command my sinuses to open up and clear out this cavity. I command fresh breath and fresh air where I'll be able to breathe without hindrance. And I rebuke any hindering spirits that are trying to clog my sinuses or impede my breathing. In the name of Jesus, I speak wholeness and 100% life in the bridge of my nose and my sinus cavity. In Jesus' name, we declare it. Amen. Amen and amen, okay? Now you're going to feel that wholeness right around here. Okay? All right. Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me I need to rebuke the spirit of poverty. So in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I rebuke the spirit of poverty. 
because the scripture it is written, the scripture says that wealth and riches are in the house of the just man that give and it shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, good measure and running over shall men give into your bosom. There is no man that is left, father, mother, brother, sister, wife, houses or land for my sake and the gospels that shall not receive in this life 100 times, 100 fold and in the world to come eternal life. So in the name of Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of poverty. I cast it out. I command you to dry up from the root because poverty is not for the saints. Anything you have given to the kingdom of God will be multiplied 100 fold and sent back to you. So in the name of Jesus Christ, I cast out the spirit of poverty and I break you off of the heads of the saints. And right now, if there's anybody in your life that's still talking poverty, you need to either shut them up or get away from them. Many times people stay in financial lack so long because you are around people that are talking lack. Stop talking lack out of your mouth and stop being around it. Okay? Speak the word of God so that your financial prosperity may begin to manifest on the level you need to manifest it on. Because remember, according to your faith, so it is unto you. You're not going to get a million dollars from God if you're only believing him for ten. If you only believe God can give you $10, $10 is what's going to show up. You're not going to get into the higher levels of finances until you believe that God will bless you on that level. Okay? According to your faith, so it is unto you. That's why you can't be around people that are speaking poverty. You can't be around people that are speaking lack. You have to get away from that. Okay? Okay, the Holy Ghost is telling me to rebuke a spirit of weakness. So right now, if you are weak in your body, in the name of Jesus Christ, I rebuke that spirit of weakness. And I speak the word of God. With long life are you satisfied and shown the salvation of God. You shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Not the joy of the Lord is your weakness. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I speak strength to your life, strength to your limbs, strength to your joints. Strength to your bones, strength to your veins and your arteries and your heart and your digestive system. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. And we rebuke the spirit of weakness right now in Jesus' name. So if you're feeling weak or you feel like weakness is trying to come upon you, or if the devil is telling you that you're over, that you're out of strength, don't listen to that, okay? Because the joy of the Lord is your strength. And God will, when you wait upon the Lord, he'll renew your strength. You'll mount up with wings like eagles. You'll run and not be weary. You'll walk and not faint. That's what's written in the scripture. That's what we claim. That's what we believe. That's what we walk in. All right? All right. In terms of finances, the Spirit of God is telling me that the Lord is ready to initiate a wealth transfer. Now, those of you that have been in church any length of time, you've heard that phrase a lot, that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. But the Lord is saying now is the season for that to actually happen, for the wealth of the world to come into the body of Christ. Why? Because we are tithers and we are givers and we are givers of alms. We are here on this earth to establish God's kingdom, to establish God's word. That's why we pay our tithes and give our offerings in church so that the word of God might go forth. Because mankind shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And God says in the scriptures that if you build him a house, he'll build you a house. So those of you Christians that are putting God first in your finances, God wants to put the money in your hands now, the wealth that you need to help establish his kingdom on earth. And then when you give God your 10, 20, 30%, whatever kind of tithes and offering combination you give, God will bless and multiply the remaining 70, 80% that you have left over for your household. God is ready to do that for you now. That's why the Holy Ghost is talking about alignment, that the, the money's not going to flow the way you need it to if you are out of purpose, if you are out of alignment. But God is ready to put that money in your hands right now to turn your situation around. That's why you have to be sure you are lined up with the head of the church, Jesus Christ. And also understand of a surety 
God moves according to his purpose and his seasons. That means if you don't listen to the Lord when he's telling you to do something, who knows when that season is going to come around again. Now, I've discovered I'm going to have to do a No More Genies broadcast so people can understand that you can miss God. And there are people in the Bible that completely miss God. So the scripture says, the Lord says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. That means God is saying, when you first hear me talk to you, don't harden your heart. Don't, don't turn me away. Don't turn out my voice. Don't tune me out. Listen to what I'm saying and obey. And I'm here to tell you as a prophet of God, it is the season for financial wealth transfer for the saints where God actually wants to put the money in our hands. But if you miss this season, I don't know when the next one's going to be. This is February. We're in the middle of February. I don't know what the Lord is going to be doing in March. I don't know what the Lord is going to be doing in April. I don't know what the Lord is going to be doing in May. I don't know what the Lord is going to be doing in June. What I do know is that I need to obey what he's telling me right now in February. And remember, I always tell you, whatever I'm saying to you, I'm doing it myself. I'm doing what the Lord has called me to do right now, even as we speak. But when a new season comes, a whole lot of people are out of sync with God. And they don't understand that you're not going to be able to do February's work, February, <laughs> February's work in June. You're not going to be able to do March's work in July. You're not going to be able to do April's work in August. It doesn't work that way. You've got to move when the Lord is telling you to move. That's why this whole thing is about being in sync, about snapping into place. Whatever God is telling you right now, you've got to do it right now. You can't delay so that when he begins to open up the rivers of finances. Let me give you some practical examples so you know what I mean. Let's say you're trying to get your career in a certain place. And let's say it looks like for the longest time, nothing has been happening. But all that time, you've been releasing content. You've been sowing seeds. You've been networking. You've been planting. You've been putting stuff on your website. You've been doing what you're supposed to do. And it looks like nothing popped off. I stopped by to tell you, when God sends that person in your life that's going to change your life, they're going to look at all that you've done and be like, wow, what if you didn't do it? What if you have no resume? What if you have no bio? What if you have nothing to show for your years because you never did what the Lord told you to do? A lot of people, because I'm an author, a lot of people tell me they want to write a book, but what they mean is, I want to write a bestseller out the gate. And if I can't write a bestseller out the gate, then forget it. <laughs> but it doesn't always work that way. There's no guarantee you're going to write a bestseller out the gate. But write the book anyway. Get it out there. See, that's what I mean. you got to do it. you got to be in step. you got to be in sync. Because you never know when the day is going to come where you meet someone or you get into a situation that changes your life. But if you're not in place, it can't happen. If you're out of the will of God, it's going to pass you by, and you might not ever even know. You might not ever even know about the opportunities you missed because you were out of the place that God had called you to be. Uh, let me give you another practical example. There are some people that are called into ministry, and they just don't want to go. Most of us, because a whole lot of people that go into ministry, if you called yourself, that's why you're so excited. Because mama and them told you you were supposed to be a pastor. Okay. When God calls you, most of us fight. <laughs> most of us do not want to give up our lives to minister. But when God calls you, God is going to show you exactly where he wants you to go and exactly what he wants you to do. One day a blessing will come, an open door. My pastor talked about it this morning. My pastor said he loves it when he sees that ministry start. But he said wisdom says to give it time. Because some Christians are just pop-up Christians. You've got to stay in the place that God has called you to be long enough to weather a few storms so that when doors of opportunity open, you can walk through them. I'll give you an example from my own life. Um, a couple months ago, uh, my prophetic team was called to minister at a conference. And it was a great conference. And I personally loved it. I loved all the people I talked to. I loved all the people I met. But I thought to myself, what if I wasn't on the prophetic team? What if I was disobedient and I was somewhere else doing other things? Then that opportunity would have passed me by and I would have never known that I had a chance for that to happen because I was somewhere out the will of God. That's what I mean. 
Same thing is true. You hear me say it all the time. Same thing is true for people and their spouses. Because there was a spouse season back in 2015. Summer of 2015, God released a lot of spouses to people. And I personally know a lot of people that missed them. And they missed them because they were out of the will of God. They weren't doing what the Lord said to do. And they missed the person they were supposed to marry. So when is spouse season going to come back around? I do not know because I'm not the Lord. All I know is you got to do what the Lord is telling you to do when he's telling you to do it. So you can stay in sync with him. That's why you have to snap into place. Because Jesus is going to send you opportunities. But I'm telling you, right now, in the second month of 2019, there are financial opportunities for great, great wealth that are on the path, that are just down the road, that are coming up. But only the people that are in place with God are going to be able to harvest them. I'll give you another example. I met some people uh, from out of the country uh, several months ago at church, and I had been praying about this particular country, and lo and behold, there are some people from that country in church, and I met them, and we struck up a friendship, and they were great, and I, I, I was just blessed by knowing them. What if I hadn't been in church that day? What if I hadn't been there? I would have never known <laughs> that some of the very people from the country I was praying about was right there in my home church. I would have even not ever known they were there if I had been out of place. That's my point. That's why the devil tries so hard to get you out of the will of God, because there is wealth. And when I say wealth, I mean money. There's financial prosperity in the will of God. That's why the devil comes at you so hard to knock you out of it. And if you get knocked out, then there are going to be blessings that you never have a chance to realize. Okay? That's what ha happened to Jacob in the Bible. Jacob got a vision of a ladder from heaven, and he saw angels ascending and descending on that ladder. But it was later until it hit Jacob when he finally realized that God gave him a vision of who he was and what he was supposed to do with his life, that Jacob was supposed to become Israel, okay, that he had nations and kings inside of him. And when Jacob got the clue, he pulled his whole family up and said, we going back up to Bethel and we going up to worship. I'm going back to where God showed me the vision because he finally got it. But what happened to all them years, all them months, he was out of sync. Do you see what I mean? That's how important snapping into place is. There's joy on the path of God, but there is money on the path of God that you're going to miss if you don't do what the Lord says do. All right? All right. So God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, as always, it's a great time. I always feel privileged uh, to be used of God because God does not need me. God does not need me. God gave me an opportunity to be a part of his kingdom. God gave me an opportunity to walk as a prophet. And it's his grace and his goodness because whenever God calls you to something, it's an opportunity not to waste your life. If you don't do what God has called you to do, it doesn't matter how much fun you have in the meantime, you're wasting your life. So I am grateful to be out here as a prophet. I'm grateful to flow in the prophetic I'm grateful to be used by God because God does not need me. But he gave me a chance, and I want to take every advantage of it, okay? Because God can always take whatever he gave you and give it to somebody else. Sometimes God will let you live long enough to see your replacement come to power. That's what he did with King Saul. He took the kingdom of Israel from King Saul because King Saul was double-minded. He's wishy-washy. Back and forth, spirit to flesh, flesh to spirit, little bit of God, little bit of me, little bit of church, little bit of the world. And God got tired of him. So God tore the kingdom from Saul and gave it to David and let Saul live long enough to see David rise to power. Sometimes God will do you like that. If you spit your gifts and your calling and your opportunity back in God's face, then God will take them from you and give them to somebody that will be grateful and let you live long enough to see your replacement rise up. And sometimes that replacement is your children. Sometimes God will put a mantle on your kids that you were supposed to carry. I can't tell you how many people I've seen come to the end of their lives and realize they should have obeyed God a long time ago. But now the mantle's falling on the next generation. So that's what I'm saying. Don't play games with this. Don't play games with this. Take this seriously. Whatever God's calling you to do, do it right now and get yourself in place because there's joy in that place 
but there's money, financial prosperity, uh, uh, financial blessings in the path of God, okay? And we want to reap our full harvest so we can pay our tithes and offerings and do alms for the poor so we can use that money invested the way the Lord wants us to and make sure that his word, his kingdom is established on earth in our lifetimes. And when you do that, God will reward you both in this life and eternally. God will give you stuff that will literally never fade away. That's why we know who Abraham is. That's why we know who Moses is. That's why we know who King David and King Solomon are. That's why we know who Apostle John is. That's why we know who Apostle Paul is. Because God rewarded them with an eternal name. Names that do not fade. He didn't just give that to Jesus. He gave Jesus the name above every name. But he did not give Jesus the only name. Because Abraham has a name. Sarah has a name. Esther has a name. Ruth has a name. That's how we know who they are. Jesus' mama, Mary. Mary has a name. That's how we know who these people are because God gave them a name that's never going to fade. You see that? That's the kind of stuff you get when you invest with God. You can't get that nowhere else. So that's why I want to encourage you, my brothers and sisters, to obey the voice of God, snap into place, and get in the will, the perfect will of God, get in the path of God so that every blessing he has for you can be yours. All right? Amen. God bless you. I will see you same time next week. Don't forget to check out my No More Genie series. That last Thursday I did Save My Marriage Part 2, and I went over all the stuff the Lord tells us before we get married about the relationships to avoid. And also, if you follow me on Facebook, you know that I'm doing a book drop in a couple of weeks. I have another children's book coming out. Matter of fact, I have it right here. I have my children's book coming out. Grumpy Lumpy, it looks backwards, sorry. Grumpy Lumpy, Frumpy and Stumpy. <laughs> That's my children's book. That's coming out. On the 26th of this month. So if you follow me on Facebook, I'm doing a book launch there. So I only say that to demonstrate to you that, like I say all the time, I'm doing what I'm telling you to do. Okay? I'm not saying one thing and doing another. I'm doing what I was called and born to do. So I just want you to know that I'm practicing what I'm preaching. Okay? God bless you. Thank you. I'm so grateful for you. And I will see you same time next Sunday.